Hey everyone, Steph here from Old Guy Melts Plastic. Um, so I've been playing with my uh, V02. Uh, I've made a few more changes, including installing a um, rapid burner tool head, which is from a user on the Voron Discord called Chirpy. Uh, thank you, Chirpy, for designing the rapid burner tool head. Uh, the rapid burner includes um, two 4010 blower fans on the left and right side for part cooling, which is more part cooling than comes with the mini stealth burner. Um, and it also has a, I believe that's a 3510 um, hot end fan on the front. So lots of cooling for the hot end as well. Um, I've paired it with a um, Sherpa, that's a Sherpa micro extruder, which I built um, from the designs from Annex Engineering. Uh, so thank you for that. And, uh, you know, I did this because I wanted to use the Thetis uh, Rapido UHF hot end, which has a high flow rate and so can push more melted plastic faster, uh, allowing you to push your print speeds up a little bit. So uh, this was one of the um, only tool heads that I could find easily that, you know, had the support for the Rapido UHF. Um, and that was kind of key to my decision making into installing this um, print head, this tool head. Now, in order to take full advantage of that, of course, you have to, um, you know, treat, tweak your slicer settings accordingly. And I had... Um, you know, made a few mistakes with my previous slicer settings. I was using um, the very uh, commonly referred to and used um, slicer settings that are provided by Andrew Ellis in his print tuning guide. And uh, while they worked and provided good quality parts, they weren't really maximizing the flow rate that I needed, um, which was in part my fault, um, I was not setting some of the settings on the filament um, flow rate uh, properly. So once I realized that, uh, that opened up some new doors performance-wise for me. And then I had some help from a, a, a f another user on the Voron Discord. He goes by So Says I on Voron, uh, the Voron Discord server. And uh, he shared with me his slicer profiles, which had some additional um, tuning to the accelerations uh, and that's what's making you know this this go pretty quick um, some of my print times were you know when I would slice the files uh, I would get a 30 to 40 percent um, savings on total print time so I'm gonna pause the video here I'm gonna switch up to my computer and uh, continue the video looking at the slicing settings that I've put in place All right, so here we are on my computer system, and we're looking at the mainsail interface for uh, my V0 printer. The flow rate and speed are shown in real time here. The flow rate is in cubic millimeters per second, the speed in millimeters per second. With the configuration that I have and the parts that I have, you'll see that these values you know, fluctuate uh, quite a bit over the course of the print. That is typical. Um, we, you know, Mainsail gives you a real-time view rather than just a, a static view, as you might see on some other uh, commercial printers. And I find that's um, more indicative, more accurate of what's actually happening on the print head, uh, the tool head as well. So I prefer this, this view. The... Um, configuration that I have with the Rapido UHF and the Bontech uh, CHT 0.4 millimeter volcano nozzle is spec to achieve up to 44 cubic millimeters per second flow rate. And so that's the value that I'm using to base all of my slicer calculations on. Speaking of slicer, I use Super Slicer. And so let's have a look at the Super Slicer settings. I mentioned earlier in the video that uh, I had um, neglected to adjust accordingly. So if we look at the speed settings here, um, my volumetric speed based on the hot end configuration that I have, 
uh, I've set to 44 cubic millimeters per second. And the filament settings has an override for the same value that you can set per filament because some filaments might require you to print it at a slower speed, depending on the material involved. And so you can uh, force the speed down or up as needed, um, but generally down on the filament uh, in a per filament setting. And so previously when I was testing this, I hadn't realized this value was set here. I was just tweaking the speed in the print settings. And uh, because I, I did that, when I looked at my uh, print and sliced it, the total print time was 12 hours and eight minutes. And simply by removing that value and re-slicing, the total print time here more than halves to five hours and 37 minutes. Now, this is, you know, an example with a large cubic part. These aren't, you know, actual real world parts, but just to give you uh, an extreme example of what might be possible by, in, you know, using a, a higher flow hot end and tweaking nothing else, you basically can achieve, you know, potentially up to, you know, half or even greater uh, print speed reductions. Uh, in actuality, with the plate of parts that I have, the, the total print time uh, reduction was, in fact, minimal. It was only a few, a few minutes overall. But um, over the lifespan of the printer, you know, this will save you some time. And so upgrading the hot end can be a um, valuable um, upgrade to your printer. So let's have a quick look at the print settings uh, and speed settings. So... Um, for printed parts that I'm going to use, you know, uh, mechanical parts, I tend to set the base layer height, first layer height to 0.2 millimeters per second or five layers per millimeter. Um, that is pretty common in 3D printing. Uh, you can reduce this number to get, you know, higher vertical prints, but at the sacrifice of print time. So um, you got to find what, you know, makes sense to you. If you feel that there's too many layer lines that are obviously visible in your print and you want to reduce that, um, you can, you know, decrease these values, but realize that your print time is going to go up accordingly because it's less to lay down, you know, that many more layers. The infill settings here, I use 40% uh, for uh, structural parts. Um, this is based on the uh, Voron uh, print guide for printed parts for the Voron printers. Um, you can get away with a lower percentage for you know other things, but this is the, the recommended infill value for those parts. And so that, that's what I'm printing. So that's the value that I've set. Looking at the speed settings, these settings I've borrowed directly from Andrew Ellis's uh, Super Slicer profiles that he shares on his print tuning guide, uh, which is an excellent way for any 3D printing enthusiast to get better quality, you know, do some testing and, and uh, verification of your, of your printer settings to get better quality prints. So I strongly encourage anyone uh, looking to improve their printing um, with 3D prints to look at Andrew Ellis's print tuning guide, and uh, I'll link that in the video description below. My travel speed here for non-print moves is 500 millimeters a second. I have done no speed tuning on this printer. Um, the Voron that I'm printing with is with stock hardware, so stock LDO motors um, and uh, 24 volt power supply. I haven't done any uh, high voltage um, PSU or anything on this one. And um, these, these values, again, I, I haven't done any speed tuning. Um, I've borrowed them from another um, Voron user who has basically the same hardware that I have. And uh, they've kind of settled on these values that work well for them. And I have to agree, it's a, a big improvement over the settings that I had previously. Uh, I have set the volumetric flow rate here to 44 cubic millimeters a second and the max print speed, this is kind of a ceiling. I'm never actually going to achieve this value, I don't think. Um, I'd have to double check in the slicer to, to once I sliced apart to see if we ever actually get to 500 millimeters a second. But 
um, we're probably never going to hit this value. It's just kind of a, a ceiling to uh, keep it from, you know, trying to calculate things up into infinity. The default acceleration here I borrowed from uh, So Says I is the uh, Voron uh, Discord server username. Uh, so thank you to So Says I. Um, he's been a great help with getting me to tweak and, and improve my uh, new V02 printer. Um, so many thanks to, to him for that. Uh, and these are the settings that he uses for acceleration. Um, and rather than do any of my own speed tuning, which I probably should do eventually, um, I just borrowed his settings for now. The first layer speed here is still significantly slower. And uh, that's typically done because the first layer really is the foundation that everything else rests on, uh, much like building a house. Um, you want your foundation to be solid, otherwise uh, you risk, um, you know, a print failure part way up. So um, generally it's recommended to, you know, slow the print down significantly for the first layer. These values are, are pretty common in stock. Um, I could tweak them up a bit higher, but I don't mind spending a bit of extra time on the first layer if it means a higher success rate on the parts. So that's fine. And finally, the width and flow settings. Again, these percentage values are pulled right out of Andrew Ellis's slicer settings. I haven't tweaked them at all. There's all sorts of tests and calibration settings that you could do with your printer to kind of find the right values for you. And some of these can be a bit subjective because the part that looks perfectly acceptable to me might not meet somebody else's you know, um, OCD. Um, and so, that's fine, um, but you know these settings were kind of recommended from people who've been in this much longer than I have and been working with this for, for much more time than I have. So um, I, I am standing on the shoulders of giants. So thank you to uh, Andrew Ellis and thank you to So Says I. Um, thank you to Chirpy from the Voron Discord for the uh, tool head uh, design and Annex Engineering team uh, for the extruder design of the mini Sherpa, the Sherpa, in this one, it's a Sherpa Micro. Um, and so thank you to Thetis and LDO for designing the hardware that I'm using in this system. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a great journey uh, building this V0. I'm really happy with it. I'm spending an inordinate amount of time playing with this little printer. Uh, but rather enjoying the experience. So um, this video has gone on far too long already, but I hope uh, you learned a little something today. And thank you very much for watching and tuning in. Have a good day.